If there's one bit of kit that you need for an electric car, or at least that will make your electric car ownership experience just a little bit better, it's a home charging station. Sure, you can charge your car from the granny lead that inevitably came with your car. Or if you live in an apartment or somewhere where you don't have access to off-street parking and charging, you can use public charging infrastructure. But to really benefit from those low operating costs, to really benefit from getting in the car every morning with a full charge, a full tank, ready to take on the rest of the day, you need to have a charging station at your house. And so we've seen various different charging stations over the years. I've been driving an electric car since 2007, so I've had plenty of different charging stations, even though my first electric cars didn't need a charging station. What we've got today here at our home is a Siemens charging station. Uh, we bought this in 2015 when I immigrated to the United States. We also have a juice box 40 on the other side of the garage, which we were using to charge my car when we bought this house last year. But as you can see, this garage is far from useful for parking cars in right now because my wife does woodworking as a hobby and this has become her woodworking shop until we can build a woodworking shop somewhere else on the property. But we're going to be testing a new charging station over the next couple of weeks from NLX. Now, they're the guys behind the juice box charging station. As I said, we've got a previous version of that. But what we're going to do today is we're going to install the very latest version of that. We're going to take a look at the new design. We're going to see how easy or hard it is to install. I don't know because I've not installed it yet. And then we're going to go through the setup process with you here. If you're watching this on the main Transport Evolved channel, then you've probably missed out the live stream which is taking place right now on Transport Evolved Take Two. But you can always go back and watch that live stream if you think you've missed something. The first thing we're going to do at this point is to take the old charging station and unplug it from the wall. And then literally just lift this off like so. And then I think I need to take this off the wall. So one thing I didn't note at this point was that all of the charging stations that I'm working with today are just plug-in charging stations. Now you can have a professional electrician come and hardwire a charging station into your home. But what a lot of people are choosing to do is have an electrician install a dedicated 240 volt NEMA 1450 circuit. That's obviously if you're in North America into which you then plug your charging station. In Europe, the regulations are slightly different. Sometimes the charging station will be hardwired into your home. Sometimes there'll be ones that you can plug in to a dedicated high voltage outdoor circuit. Now, here in the States, if it's inside and you've got a home with a 1450 socket, a lot of new homes do. This is sometimes the easiest way because it ensures that you've got uh, future proofing for the circuit. This is a dedicated 40 amp circuit, uh, sorry, dedicated 50 amp circuit in this house. We've actually got two of them. And so we've got two dedicated 50 amp circuits for charging stations. Nothing else uses them. Uh, but in our case, it's also kind of useful because if my wife does need to use a high power power tool, she can just unplug the charging station, plug her dedicated high power uh, tool in, use it, and then plug the charging station back in. So we've got the new juice box charging station here. It's really nicely packed. Let me fold this down so you can see. Inside here, we've got a lovely little cardboard protector, I guess, just to help make sure that it stays in place. And then we've got this lovely cardboard pack it here and then inside we have the mounting plate for the juice box which will go on the wall and replace the the one we just took off um, as well as a couple of different sized screws and then we've got the unit itself now this unit is a lot smaller than the unit I just took off obviously from a different manufacturer but in a second, we'll compare and contrast this juice box, which is very professional looking, 
with the previous generation juice box 40 that i've got which is my own personal unit so we'll try those out and yeah just as a disclaimer i do own a juice box already uh, but it's the previous generation and so this is the nice new shiny version and we're going to put this one on the wall let's take that cardboard away and we've got a nice really long really well packaged cable in here as well as obviously that NEMA 1450 plug that you need in North America and again this is a small compact plug I'm really impressed some NEMA 1450 sockets are actually really small and this one means that it would fit in some of those smaller sockets rather than the big hulking unit we've got on the wall here uh, it's all molded it's a heavy gauge cable and it goes right into the back of the juice box. Let's get it out of the box and compare it to the old unit. So there's a couple of other things in the juice box box, the juice box box, um, which I hadn't found. A uh, set of keys so you can lock the juice box to the bracket which is kind of useful and then we've got a product registration card um a if you get stuck call us card and then we've got this really nice manual uh for the juice box and obviously we're using a juice box 40. um it tells you what is in the box which is useful just to make sure that you've got everything. One of the things I haven't dealt with yet is why the NLX juice boxes are so cool to have around. Unlike the Siemens unit that I just took off the wall, these are smart charging stations. So the Siemens unit was a dumb charging station. It had the ability to delay charging by two, four, six or eight hours. It had the ability to, uh, to have a preset current, which we talked about already but it had no way to respond to demand changes in the local electricity grid, which is what the juice box's kind of special source is. Through the NLX software, the juice net that you have on the charging station, that's a companion app for your smartphone. There's also a web app. You can control when your car charges based on the local grid demand and also based on how clean the local grid is. There are also really neat features that allow you to say, okay, when I get home from work and I plug the car in, I want you to charge the car to a certain capacity or a certain range and then stop charging and then fill up the battery as and when based on how dirty the local grid is or how clean the local grid is, as well as other use case factors as well. And that allows NLX to work with utility companies in some parts of North America to actually give you incentives for not charging. Because if you're not charging your electric car when peak demand is happening, you're actually saving the energy generator money as well. So the energy generator will then give you credits, sometimes off your bills, sometimes credits towards other things that you can then uh, benefit from not charging your car up during those peak periods. Conversely, you can also earn money by charging your car up when there is an excess of power in the grid. Either it's a really sunny day and everyone's producing lots of, of solar energy on the roof of their homes, or maybe it's a really windy day and there's an excess wind, or maybe it's just a low demand period and the electricity generators are generating more electricity than you uh, as a community are using. You can benefit from that one too. So let's take a look at the old juice box, which is what we've got here, this black box here. Now, it was originally designed by the guys at eMotorworks. They were acquired by NLX, and that's part of the reason why the design has changed. But it was eMotorworks that came up with the software and the design of the original juice box. They were very utilitarian, kind of quite sturdy. Um, not a whole lot on the outside of this. Um, and, and so, when the, the transition to uh, NLX came along, NLX redesigned the charging station. Um, they integrated the cable hand, uh, holder and also the charge holster. So you can put the plug straight back in there. Um, with the old version of the juice box, you got a separate holder for your plug. And uh, 
it was a little bit more utilitarian. Now I've had this unit on the wall of this house for about a year. I've had very few problems with it. It's been very reliable. Um, it charges up my car uh, using the, the profile that I've set. Unfortunately, my local utility does not participate in uh, the NLX program that allows me to earn rebates, but it's a very nice unit. Now, I'm gonna be installing two of these units later on this year and show you one of the other features that the JuiceNet um, application has, which is the ability to share two charging stations on one 50 amp power supply. Now that means if you've got more than one electric car, you can actually share a single 50 amp circuit with two charging stations. In order to do that, you have to go through some special electrical code. You do have to have an electrical installation and they have to be hardwired units, unlike the plug unit, which is what we've got here. But that is coming later this year, primarily because right now, as you can see behind me, we don't have use of this garage as a place to park our cars. It's currently a woodworking shop because we're building a chicken coop. But let's have a look at the rear of this old unit and you'll see it's kind of all metal to construction. It's quite clunky. Uh, it's got the mounting plate on the back and you obviously install the other part of the mounting plate on the wall. Now, this is actually smaller in, in, in terms of dimensions than the new juice box unit, but the new juice box unit is certainly uh, a lot smarter in its appearance. It's a lot more stylish. Underneath, they have a very similar hardware. They're running the same software. They're both internet connected. Obviously you have a connection to your Wi-Fi uh, network and we'll talk about that in a second. But let's get this new unit on the wall and see what the installation process is like. Now, unlike the previous unit, which was a plastic bracket, this is a nice metal bracket. I'm actually gonna put it on the wall at about the same place as the previous one. And my hope is that we'll be able to certainly just use the previous mounting holes, or at least one of them, to get it in place. So do you remember me saying that this one is actually slightly smaller than the unit it replaces? But that is the nice, that's a really sturdy bracket, as opposed to the bracket that was on there previously, which was a bit flimsy. So unlike the previous version of the uh, juice box, which has a little screw at the bottom that, that helps secure it on the wall after you hang it over the top. So there's a, a bracket at the top that you hang the unit on, and then there's a little hole in the bottom that allows you to screw a screw into the wall to secure it. This has two machine screws, which we saw in the packet, and they line up with the machine screws on the back of this particular unit. So, Let's see if we can get them lined up. There we go, there's one. Bottom one's not in. There we go. So there we are. They're both uh, in line and on the wall. And then we lock that in position. So at the moment, you can use this as a regular charging station. You can just plug it into your car and it will work. But the real secret sauce is gonna take you connecting it to the internet. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you've just got one Wi-Fi network in your house and it's got a really easy password and it's compatible with the JuiceNet, then you're not gonna have any problems connecting to JuiceNet. But if like me, you live in a, like we've got a 2000 square foot house, we've actually got three Wi-Fi networks. We've got a fast network, we've got a slow network, and then we've got the teenager network, which is what our teenage daughter uses, uh, and it's throttled so that she doesn't kill the internet when I'm trying to work. Um, it does sometimes mean that you have to do some, some jumping through hoops to get the right network visible to the JuiceNet uh, device it won't see hidden networks and unless there's something I've missed there's no way for you to add a hidden network so that it can look for that and, and attach to it so what I've had to do is I've had to basically unhide one of our hidden networks so that it can see it and join it and then when it's fully connected and everything's happy then it will work just fine on that hidden network let's go to the device here and we're gonna turn it on uh, it tells you to unplug it and then plug it in, which you've just done. Uh, and then you have to look on your Wi-Fi list for JuiceNet and then like a number. And JuiceNet and a number is the JuiceNet's ad hoc internet connection. It's how you configure it. It's fairly common with a lot of Internet of Things 
um, systems. And uh, I'm not going to lie to you, this is not the first time I've tried to pair this, uh, but the last time I tried to pair it, I actually used the incorrect Wi-Fi password because we've got several Wi-Fi networks here. Um, in the interest of security, they all have a slightly different password. There we go. Let's see if I can do it right this time. Almost done. Waiting for the Wi-Fi connection to the internet with the correct password. Unlike last time, or when you use the wrong one. I feel so stupid. I was like making this video and I was going, oh, there might be problems. It's now telling me that it's successful. And is it online? It's saying it's offline. So let's find out if it really is. It doesn't look offline. Hey, it's just said it's charging. All right, so uh, right now it's um, charging my Chevrolet um, Bolt and it's asking me to select my vehicle that I have. Um, so what you do is you click here and you say, I have a Chevrolet. And then I have a bolt and it's say 2017 and then I can name it. So I'm going to call this one Artemis Artemis. Okay. 60 kilowatt hour. That all looks good. It's a one phase unit save vehicle. And now JuiceNet is charging my car, but through here I can see how much power I've added. I can limit how much power I want to go in the battery, so I can tell it to charge until a specific percentage. And I can also uh, do the smart charging, which means you can tell it, hey, I need you to be ready to go by this time, so please just charge until you're full. So now it's charging, the unit is flashing green, and we're going to be using this for the next month or two to see how we get on. So I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. You can support us through Patreon. You can send us a coffee through Kofi and do all of those other amazing things. Uh, if you've been watching the live stream, you'll see the hilarity of me trying to get this to connect to the Wi-Fi, blaming my house Wi-Fi when all the time it was this this thing that was broken. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the the cleaner version of this as always. Keep evolving.